All right, all right, welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue from where we left off in the Offensa series. So in the last episode, we have more like a structure to handle the login and register. And we did set up the odds routes in general. However, today we want to continue with the login and register functions. We want to actually have something to work with. So for this, we're going to start by defining a user DB. And the intention here is we want to manage the DB interactions here. So all we have to do on the API side is just call the necessary functions and use it. So in here, I'm going to create user.group and this is going to manage activities relating to user uh, collections or user DB in that manner. So here we're going to have package DB as usual. And in here, we're going to be interacting or rather we're going to be connecting the user with the DB. So that means if you have the DB construct with you, you can access the user uh, call tests in it. So what I mean by that is we are going to have a func here. We're going to associate it with the DB. We're going to reference database here. And here we're going to define get user. So get user is started with chapter data because obviously I want to access this from a different package eventually. So it says get user by email, but technically email is going to be the only thing you can get user by. So it's not compulsory we specify the by email. So here I'm going to have the email, then we have this as string. So the expectation would be either a user struct or an error. However, we don't even have a user struct yet. So for my user struct, I'm going to have type user param. So this is going to also serve as the param we are going to use to obtain data for both login and register. So this is going to be struct, and this is going to be email, string. And because we are going to be working with MongoDB, we also need the Bison data structure. So we can represent that by having this as Bison. So the Bison is going to be email. Then we can specify the JSON one as well, email as well. And that's cool. So the next one, we can have the password, string Bison is password. Then the JSON is password as well. So again, the Bison is because we are going to be storing this to our MongoDB. So this is like a way for MongoDB to recognize these um, parameters. Okay. So now our expectation at the end of the day is going to be a user param or an error. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to have my collections within a specific struct. So instead of having to define the collections directly, like it was suggested just now, as you can see here. So this is what we are going to do at the end of the day, but the collection is going to be a predefined value. And to do that, I'm going to come down to my utils, have a file called collections.grow, like that. And again, this is going to be packaged utils. Then here I can define a variable. This is not going to be a struct. Uh, this is not going to be a type, but a variable. So collections, and this is going to be a struct. So we're going to define both the structure and the value. So by default, we want users and the structure is going to be a string. Then here we can have the value itself, which is going to be users of users. So this is more like you defining a class that you can just ask, uh, obtain the parameter, the attributes. So now we can come back to here. We have the user parent here. Then instead of accessing the collections directly, we can now use our utils dot collections dot user yep like that so yeah we are trying to find one however this is going to change from d dot contest to contest dot background like that also we need the bison uh, compiler which we already have through the mongo driver so we can just import that and that's all we need to do so we access the connection through the db we have access to that then we specify our collection then we find one so we specify the email. So that's just the idea. There's no unique control. This is MongoDB. It's an example of no SQL. So you can't really control if this field is meant to be unique or not. So one way to do this would be to verify if that user exists before you try to create another user. So then we can decode the user and we can specify this. So if error is not nil, then we can send the user should be, yeah, we've defined the user param already should be user or error or we return the user we've decoded into this and that's all we have to do with the get user 
And since we are trying to also create a user, we can also define a function to create user. So in regards to create user, all we need here is just the user param, which is going to be this, and all we are returning is the error. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get if the user exists. So that we can do underscore comma error. We want to remove all this and we can have db dot get user. Uh, we can specify the user dot email. So if error is new, so this should be D. So if error is new, meaning we are able to actually get user. So error being new means there was no error. That means we're able to get user. That means the user with the email we are specifying already exists. So here we want to return an FMT error. So FMT error F user already exists. However, if there was an error getting this user, it means the user does not exist. Then we can proceed with our flow of creating a new user. So here we can have this. So DB collections, we specify the user's collection. We have a SAT one and we specify the user. And because of our biasing structure here, it's going to know how to define those information. Finally, if error is not new, we can return error. That doesn't really matter anyways. So we're expecting error as our return. So what we can do is just do return error. And that's good. And that's the flow. Okay, there is an issue here. Oh, okay. So it's saying that error strings should not be capitalized. So that's fixed. So yeah. That's what we have here. Now we can make use of this within our register and login functions. So coming back into our hot, so we can ignore this for now. So here we're going to have variable user, which is equals to db dot user params, which is what we want. And here we can try to bind our results into it. So we have if error into ctx dot should bind json then we specify the user object so if error is not nil which means there is an error then we can do this we can return this particular error so it's a bad request because we are unable to bind it to what we are expecting and we are returning the error here and once we are able to pass through that, then we can create the user. So we have user into error. Then we have server a.server.db. So we have reference to the server through a, which is odd here. Then there from the server, we have access to the db. And the db is connected to the get user function. And that's how we are able to get it here. So in the process of trying to get the user, if there is no user, it means you don't have a valid credential. That means the user does not exist. So here we can have if error is not new. So we have two options here. We can just decide to say status bad request, or we can share the condition that warrants you not to have a user. And that will be if error is equivalent to mongo dot error no documents, then the error here is different. So instead of returning the user not found, because we are trying to log you, we just say invalid email or password, but rather I'll do invalid credentials like that. However, if the error is not this, then that means there is an issue with our server. Again, we have cts.json status internal server error. Then we are good on that note. Then finally, we can return that we are logging. That's not the final logging flow, but that's what we're going to go with for this episode. So return or rather cts.json status. Okay. Then message logged in. Yeah, user, they were good. So yeah, we're going to have this as logged in. Okay, cool. So that's what we want to go with for our login for now. And the only check for this is just if we have that user registered yet or not. We don't have any other check, which is something I'll get to introduce in the next episode. So now for our register, it's quite straightforward as well. We come back here, we copy this, we paste here. And we copy this as well. Actually, for the register, we are not getting access to the user. We only have the error. So in the case of the register, we are not going to dwell too much on the type of error we are having. We can do that if we want to, but I won't bother too much about that. So the CTS version I'm just going to work with for this will be status forbidden. So status forbidden is more like between internal server error and bad request, because obviously it's not a bad request. We can't really tell if it's a bad request. A bad request would be noted from here. 
And internal server error means you have an issue with your server. And in this case, it might not be an issue with your server because obviously you can't create two users with, diff uh, with the same email address, which is a possibility here. And the way I tend to stay at the middle of this would be to use the forbidden status. So I have status forbidden. So that's the one I'm going to go with. And if we don't have any issue, here I'm going to return CTS, then message user created. And we are good. We've expanded on our register and login functions. Let's see that our server is running, which it's doing. We can go ahead and test and see if this is actually working. Also, we need to take a look at our compass. Let's refresh. So we don't have any data, even our DB is not showing up because there's no entries yet. So we need to actually create something. We need to create a value before we get to see all that. So let's come back to our postman. If I try to register or log in, I'm going to get an error. Yeah, error EOF, it doesn't make any sense. And that's why we are going to also look into validation next so that this error makes sense. So if I come back to the body and provide raw data, and I send this, this time around is saying invalid credentials, which it shouldn't be. Yep. And that's because we need to specify validation. We are getting here because it has bypassed this, even though we didn't provide the expected information here. And that's because the way we've defined our data here, we are not saying if it's valid or not. We are just saying this is what we need eventually, but if you do not provide it, then it's okay. However, what we want is we want to abide in a uh, signal here telling that these fields are required. So yeah, that's what we do now. So binding required, that's all we have to do. So now if we restart the server, which is working, I will come back to postman. I will make this request again. Yep, we get this generic error. Again, we fixed this error in our last um, thing rate backend. We're going to explore that in the next episode. So we won't dwell too much on this. But this is the try telling us that the email and the password fields are required. So, yep, another validation we need is to tell it that aside from it's required, the email is expecting an email type like this. So that way we can just specify any string. So here I'm going to have email and I'm going to have tests just to confirm that the email validation is working. And here I'm going to have password and here I'm going to have secrets like that and send. So now the validation for email is coming up. So all I have to do here is just do tests at tests.com. And if I send this, yep. So this is an invalid credential because this user does not exist yet. So I can save this and try to create the user and come back to test. So I'll copy the user for this case, come down here, body, make the raw and paste, then send. So now for the register, user has been created successfully. And now we can come back to login to actually log in this user. So logged in and we have the user information. So naturally the password is not going to be like this. Obviously we don't want the password to be opening up like this. So I need to fix that in this around. And now we can come back to our compass to view this data. So we can refresh. Now we have FINSA and we have user's collection and can take a look at our object, which is looking good. So there you have it guys, that's our login and register flow working, but not completed. Okay. So I'm going to round up today's episode here. And in the next one, we are going to look at both ensuring that we handle things the right way by introducing token controls here, as well as we're going to start with our validation. We want to have good um, valid error reports. So thank you guys for staying tuned up to this wow and see you in the next episode. Bye for now.